Use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, is one of the most important control measures used to protect people from zoonotic infection when working on premises where birds are being culled to control infectious disease. Viruses such as those that cause avian influenza and Newcastle disease can present a significant zoonotic risk and therefore a threat to human health. It's essential that PPE is worn and used correctly at all times when there's a risk of exposure to infected birds. PPE is also worn to ensure that good biosecurity of the site is maintained. All people working or observing procedures on infected premises will be expected to wear, for biosecurity reasons, disposable overalls, gloves and disinfectable wellingtons. The wellingtons should be worn under the legs of the disposable overalls to prevent contaminated material entering the boots. The overall should be the outer layer of clothing and, depending upon weather conditions, it may be necessary to wear warm and or waterproof clothing under this disposable layer. For all bird diseases, it's important that respiratory protective equipment, RPE, and eye protection is worn. A choice of RPE and eye protection, all of which meet the required standard of protection, is available from appropriate manufacturers. Examples of adequate RPE are disposable FFP3 face mask, which must be worn with suitable goggles, a full face mask fitted with a P3 filter, a full hood with a powered filter unit fitted with a P3 filter. Filters have a finite lifetime for effective operation. Refer to the manufacturer's instructions and discard safely any filters whose lifetime has been exhausted. Training on the use of this equipment, including proper selection and fitting, must be given to all staff who are required to use it before they move onto infected premises. The officer in charge of the infected premises will designate where PPE must be worn and will enforce the wearing of PPE. Typically, the wearing of coveralls, etc., will be required in all parts of the infected premises. The use of RPE and eye protection will be restricted to clearly identified areas of risk, such as within a poultry shed where infected birds are housed. All protective clothing should be put on before entering infected premises. RPE should be worn when on the infected premises and before entering areas of risk. When working with infected birds, Wellington boots, overalls and gloves may become contaminated with zoonotic or pathogenic material, as well as being covered in dust and other debris which should not be inhaled. All clothing and other equipment that may be potentially covered in infected material must not leave the infected premises, or else there's a risk of spreading the disease onwards to other birds or humans. It's important that equipment and clothing is removed in the correct order. If disposable, PPE should be removed before leaving the infected premises and placed in yellow clinical waste sacks destined for incineration. If the clothing or equipment is not disposable, it must be carefully removed and any gross contamination brushed off. The equipment is then washed in a cleaning agent before it's disinfected using an approved disinfectant that will kill any infectious agent effectively. The following protocol should be adopted for removing PPE. First, remove the coverall or gown carefully and place this in the yellow clinical waste bag. Then remove your gloves, placing them in the bag. At this stage, wash and decontaminate your hands using a hand wash with antibacterial and antiviral properties to avoid contaminating your eyes and nose. Remove eye protection if it's separate from the mask. If eye protectors are reusable, place them in a separate container for cleansing and disinfection. Now carefully remove the mask, respirator or hood. Place the disposable FFP3 respirator in the bag containing the coveralls. If the filters in the reusable masks have been fully used, or it's the end of a working day, these should be disposed of safely. 
reusable items should be placed in separate sacks for subsequent decontamination. Finally, wash your hands thoroughly again.